Uh, Nick and I are going to talk to you a little bit, uh, but we also have some other folks that are going to talk to you uh, either live or by videotape, and our first one is Isaac Bridges. Why I love about After Bell is it's a fun time after school to hang out, learn about God, and just uh, have fun with your friends. We play games, we hang out, we laugh, we tell jokes, we just have a really good time. And I think it's good for the school because everyone can just come and be accepted. We don't want a anyone to be upset and this is a good place for them to be happy at. Um, it's good for the schools because it's uh, just a positive thing. We need more positive things out there. We need more things making people happy because the world isn't a nice place and we just need nice people. Like here after the bell, we have such nice people doing such nice things. And that's why I love after the bell and I think it's good for the schools. Thank you, Isaac, for that. Um, three years ago, Nick and I were at a, a, a conference called the National Youth Workers Convention. We were in Memphis, Tennessee, um, and a, we had a speaker that night uh, by the name of Brad Montague. Now, most of us probably don't have no idea who that is, but maybe you've seen the uh, YouTube series Kid President uh, before. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, Maybe you're familiar with that. Uh, the reason I remember uh, so much of the reason why he started, I remember what he said, uh, because it, it meant a lot to me at the time, but I've also seen it uh, posted, his thought and a picture of him at this conference uh, on social media many times. Uh, we'll put that up for you. Uh, this is it. And the, the thought that he came up with that day and he sent to us, and maybe you've seen it, be, be who you needed when you were younger. Be who you needed when you were younger. Uh, that really struck me that day. I, I, I related a lot with that, and I started to think, you know what? That's really exactly what I do as the middle school director of this Lawrence County nonprofit youth ministry outreach. I try to be who I needed when I was younger. Now, that seems a little counterintuitive, if you think about the fact that I went to middle school in an era where I'm, I'm, in an era where uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller was on cassette, and that was like you, you wanted that, okay? Dallas, you could all the adults were watching that on their big console TVs. You remember those? Anybody? Um, and uh, when we played basketball, we wore short shorts and long socks. That's way yes. That's what we did. Uh, so to so look back on these days, when you're thinking about youth today, when so much is different, may seem a little strange. But what I found out is that it's not that different. Yeah, the, the, the fashions, the technology, uh, the trends, far different than back then. But so much of the middle school experience is actually the same as it was back in the middle to uh, the early to middle 80s uh, when I was in middle school. And it's into that kind of ministry, uh, into that kind of world that our ministry steps. Uh, one thing that I, I have found is that middle schoolers need to know that they matter. Uh, when I was in middle school, I struggled with that. I struggled with seeing the value of myself. I struggled with every time I looked in the mirror not liking that kid that I saw back. Um, I thought that I really wasn't that memorable or that important to my friends. Um, and, or well, maybe not to my friends, but the, to most of the peers uh, that I was around. Uh, so many middle schoolers now think the same thing. Uh, sometimes not just with their peers, but with everybody in their life. 
I needed adults, people who had been there and survived, who saw me, who saw my value, saw my worth. And that's what we try to do now. That's what we aim to do uh, in this ministry. We try to show up in their lives, remember them by name, give them smiles and high fives, listen to their stories, uh, valuing them where they are right now and try to give them hope for their future. I recently ran into a girl named Lexi. Uh, she was working at her job. Uh, Lexi was somebody who came to after the bell, that's our after school ministry that we do uh, in the North Lawrence schools. Uh, Lexi came to it all throughout middle school and now she's in high school and I saw her and we had about two minutes because she was working and I was trying not to get her fired. Uh, but we started talking and in that time she brought out and now my boyfriend broke up with me today. She was kind of sad about it. So I listened and I, I was empathetic with her. Like, oh, sorry, you know, that, that you've gone through that. And finally, towards the end of our conversation, I had this small window where I, I got to say something to her. And I said, Lexi, never said it. You are too valuable for that. Now, I don't know if it made any difference in her life. I have no idea. We haven't talked since. But what I hope is that somebody in need in that situation heard that little bit of you matter and you value. And sometimes those small moments can make such a big difference. Middle schoolers also need opportunity. Uh, most people don't seem to think of middle schoolers when they think leader. They don't tend to go to them when they want things led. But I'll tell you what I found, most of the time you give them a shot, they step up. They do. I can remember when I was in middle school, and long story, but I had a, I had a few minute gig as a DJ at a dance. Don't ask me how I got that gig, it just kind of happened to me. But I was asked to DJ for just a few minutes, and I nailed it. I was good at it. I think it was to everyone's surprise. Like, what? How did that happen? It was to my surprise too. I didn't see that coming at all. But I was given an opportunity, and I stepped up, and I got it. I nailed it. We try to give our middle schoolers those shots, too. Recently, I asked Isaac to be a student leader for us. And one of the responsibilities I ask our student leaders to, to have and to take on is I want you to be a leader wherever you are. Don't just be a leader here. Be a leader in classes. Be a leader at home. Be a leader at school, where, or, you know, in church, wherever you find yourself. Lead. Uh, do it by example. Show people how to do things. And so one day at tennis practice, Isaac goes up to his tennis coach, which happens to be me, and he says, hey, coach, can I talk to the team about their attitude? Because it's not good. And I'm like, you got it, man. No problem. We can do that. It helps me as a coach, right? Um, and so I called the team together, and Isaac started talking to them about their attitude, about how we got to be better than this. We got to listen. We got to we got to do the best we can here. It was great, but it wasn't just that he said it; it's that he's gone out and been an example of how that is the rest of the season. You give them a shot, they take it, and they do it well. And the last thing I think middle schoolers really need, the same as when I was there, is they need to know about a God who loves them and wants to have a relationship with them. I, I was a brand new person following Jesus when I went into middle school. Brand new to it. And I needed people to show me what that was all about. Tell me what this is about. What is God like? Middle schoolers are just like the rest of society. They're all over the place when it comes to God. Um, and we meet them there. We meet them there. That's what we want to do. Meet them where they're at, wherever they are, and point them to the God we know. Tell him what he's done for us and showing him how you live that life. We welcome kids like Sarah, who said, I've never even been to a church before. We welcome a kid like Micah, who cannot get enough of God and he wants others to know what it's like. We welcome Samantha, who has never been able to connect with her youth group at her church, but for some reason she does with ours. And we welcome the Jordans who, when he got into high school, began a relationship with God. But he told me, you know what? That path began 
at an after the bell back in middle school. And when you support Between the Crowd through prayer, through volunteering, through advocacy, through financial uh, giving, you are being those adults that you needed when you were younger to the students of today. Hey guys, it's Nate. I just wanted to tell you how proud I'm saving my life. And uh, back at the end of my sophomore year, I have uh, gone through a really dark time of divorce and deaths. And I, I wasn't really feeling like being here anymore. And I was about to end it. And I took somebody's advice and I went to a simple old crowd meeting at Pizza Hut. And what it did was open up a whole new chapter that shut the door to the old one that I thought I was going to go to. And I started to learn all about new people, new ways of life, uh, new perspectives on simple topics like money and drugs and all this that people don't really like to talk about. And so when I say crowd saved my life, it really kept me from well, just being here. And I'm very thankful for the crowd. And so if you get the chance to, take it. Go to crowd. It'll change your life. And if it doesn't, it'll give you a new perspective on it. Thank you. So Nathan, just so you know, is now serving in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, he's currently stationed in Arkansas. I wanted to take my on. No. Okay. We'll go this way for just a second. This is the mic you're going to use, Nathan. Uh, Nathan Porter, who you just saw, is actually now serving in the U.S. Air Force and is stationed in Arkansas. Uh, I talked to him just the other day. But it, we're a ministry that saves lives, if nothing else. Now, I didn't realize this until we sat down the other day, uh, but the next young fellow that you're going to meet, his brother actually spoke at one of our banquets several years ago, his older brother, and I'd completely forgotten. Uh, so his older brother's here tonight as well. But ladies and gentlemen, Damon Waters.
Good evening. Can we pray? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for this time, this place, uh, and just the opportunity and the privilege uh, that we have um, just to be in your presence. Uh, guide this time, Father. You've been here with us. You were here before we stepped through the door. Uh, and I just I pray that you would remind us that you're here. Uh, get me out of the way that, that we could celebrate you and the work that you're doing, Father. And we praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 2020. Well, this year has been a thing. Uh, we were on a serious roll back in January. I mean, it was, ministry was incredible. We were 300 plus individual students, different individual students who had come to the crowd in the first semester of the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, we were averaging in grades six through 12, over 150 students every week across our programs. And had spring break happened, we would have taken 190 people on trips during the last school year. I mean, it was just, we were on a roll. And then, yeah, then March happened. And everybody's life suddenly changed. And things didn't go the way we intended them to go. And things didn't go. All the things we had planned suddenly changed. And, and people said, well, we'll be fine by May. You can get ready for summer stuff. And so we started planning summer stuff. And then they said, no, you can't do summer stuff either. And so then I had to call hotels and say, hey, we can't do summer stuff. There was one summer thing that got to happen, though. Uh, I've taken an annual trip for a lot of years now uh, with some of my seniors. And we go to Colorado. And this year, when we went to Colorado, we climbed Mount Beerstack, which is 14,065 feet high. And it is the 39th highest peak in the state of Colorado. Colorado has 54 peaks that are 14,000 feet or higher. This is number 39. Now just, I want to put some things in perspective for you. Annually in the United States, 550,000 people complete a marathon every year. Two million people complete half marathons in a given year. The best numbers I could find say that between 300,000 and 500,000 people actually make to the summit of a 14,000 foot mountain in the United States in a given year. So fewer people climb mountains than run marathons or half marathons. And this year I had one of the most incredible moments because I got to climb the mountain. There were eight of us, five students and three adults, and the two other adults with me were two of my best friends in the world. Uh, two people that I just love to be. In fact, a couple weekends ago, we went backpacking together. And Logan and I, who's one of my friends, were walking back down the mountain with one of, the, one of our students, one of the five guys. We did kind of spread out. Uh, you can stay in sight because there are no trees, but you get spread out. And Logan and I were walking along with one of the guys, and as we're walking, he just kind of starts getting mopey, and he goes, we didn't do anything exciting today. <laughs> we stopped dead in our tracks, and we said, what? We didn't do anything exciting today. He's like, you just climbed the mountain. Like, nobody does this. None of your friends did this. He's like, yeah, but we didn't like run around naked or anything. It's like, you're weird. What is your problem? It's like, we didn't do anything up there. It's like, yeah, it's okay. You climbed a mountain. This is the world that we live in. Our perspective can be skewed when our lens is wrong. And boy, has it been easy for our lens to be wrong in 2020. 
the theme verse for this event was Psalm 66, 5. And I'm going to back up a little bit and get a little context. Psalm 66, 1 through 5 says this, Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of His name. Give to Him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Selah. And then verse 5. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. How hard has it been for us to believe that in 2020? Have you been able to say throughout this year that the Lord is good? Have you been able to say it publicly? Let's back up for just a minute to 2019. Ministry-wise for us, for Between the Crowd, 2019 was a fine year. It was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It wasn't stellar, but it was a good year. We were having a solid year. Money-wise, though, it was rough. Uh, in fact, Dave and I got paid late or not at all almost every month uh, that year in 2019. And fundraisers like this weren't raising what we really would normally need them to raise. Uh, it was a rough year. I actually looked at Dave at one point and said, Dave, if 2020 looks like 2019, then there won't be a 2021. We just can't do it. I still have to pay a mortgage. I still have to eat food. Uh, so it's just not going to be able to happen. And so we walk into January of 2020 in desperate prayer. If you talk to members of our prayer team, I don't know how many months in a row, how many weeks in a row, they got emails from me going, please pray that God will get us through this month. Uh, there are a few of those people in this room tonight. Please just pray that God will get us through. And like I said, this year has been a thing. And 2020, what a curveball. But you know what? God has been so good to us. I have been just enamored by the generosity that has been poured out by our community. This has actually been, 2020 has been one of the best financial years we have had uh, in five years. And it is a God thing. It is, it is totally a God thing. Uh, because I say it all the time, I'm not clever enough. I'm not clever enough. But God is so good. And he deserves so much praise. And then beyond that, we've had such incredible connections. You've seen some books floating around here tonight that were signed by Andy Stanley. Those weren't purchased at a bookstore. Those happened, those are here tonight because I got to make a phone call uh, because his son, Andrew, is in my phone. Uh, Andrew and I, and Andrew said it, not me. Andrew said we're friends. Uh, and he said it on a podcast that we did together that was open to the public back in March. Uh, and so I just called him up one day and said, hey, can you get some books from your dad? And have him sign them and ship them to me. He said, yeah, I can do that. And so you have those over there tonight. And that happened in the midst of COVID. In June, I got to do something that I always kind of thought about but never thought I would actually do. I hopped on my bicycle and I started riding. And I rode 1,009 miles in the month of June on behalf of Between the Crowd, and we raised about $3,000 on that event uh, because God moved in people's hearts to be generous, and he moved in my legs to keep turning over and over and over. About 850 of those miles were done in Lawrence County. There are some people in this room that I almost clipped you a couple of times on my bicycle. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't get in my way. And then, for us as a world, I don't know what your perspective has been on 2020, but for once we had a moment to breathe, and we had a moment to rest. 
and the pause. Something we don't do well. I was listening to the podcast today. Like how horrifying it is for people to try and stop and be silent for five minutes. And we've been trapped in silence for seven months. It's been a beautiful gift. And for our young people, there's some of them sitting in the back who their day would start at 6 a.m. They go to school, they go to practice, they go to a sporting event, they come home, they do homework, they go to bed at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning so they can get up and do it all over again at 5 6 o'clock the next morning. They've never known rest, and for seven months, they've been able to pause. Just before verse 5 is this word, Selah, for all we know and all we can figure out, it's a moment of pause. It was put in there by a musician to say, we breathe here. And it's incredible because this breath comes just before the praise of God's goodness and God's greatness. And that's where we are as a ministry right now. We're in this moment of pause, brought on by COVID-19. But we celebrate and we praise because we know the work that God is doing and that he's going to do as we move forward. And we think about the future of this ministry and where God is going to take us over the coming months. And one of the places we get to celebrate is that we have been gifted a building. This is the first public announcement we have made of that. Uh, it won't come into our possession until after the first of 2021. Uh, there's some work that has to be done on it. And there will be work that we need to do. And we will need the community's help to be able to make that happen. And then further in terms of vision and thinking forward, in the next three years, we want to double our staff. We want to add two more staff members. We want to hire somebody who will work specifically and solely with Mitchell because they deserve someone. It's a beautiful community full of beautiful people, and they deserve someone to call their own instead of a split day or a split nick. They deserve their own person. And then we, we started work on a mentoring program and then COVID, uh, and the brakes got slammed. And we want to bring someone in who's going to chair that program and really champion that program and start speaking into the lives in a very real and practical way for at-risk and high-risk youth. And so those things are coming down the pike. And we're excited about the future and the way that God is going to move. We're in our moment of pause. But we begin to celebrate even now the work that God is going to do. And so there are ways you can get involved. You can become a monthly donor. That helps us out a ton. Month in and month out. Just contributing. And you can do that through the website. Uh, the link, if you go to the donate page, the link works. Uh, I've got to go back in and fix the one on the home page. But if you go to the actual donate page, that link works. We'll get the other one fixed in the next few days. Uh, or the info card that's on your sheet, or on your seat tonight. That's not a sheet, that's a seat. Uh, fill that out for us. And then as you leave tonight through these doors, you'll see a tray over there. Drop it in that tray and bring it back to us. And we'll, we'll get in touch with you. You can also volunteer. We have an amazing group of volunteers, just an incredible team of adults who love young people. You've met some of them tonight. But as we grow, we need our team to grow, and we need more people who are involved. And we need people on our prayer team. I've mentioned them a couple of times tonight. If you ask me, this is the backbone of our ministry and the success of our ministry. If we are not pleading at the feet of Jesus for our community, then what's the point of anything? We're just, a, we're just a clanging symbol. And then something else that you can do is stuff like this takes a lot of work. And Dave and I want to invest our time and our energy in young people. And so if you have a notion for a fundraiser, something you'd like to do, you've got our blessing. Go for it. Go forth and be successful. Uh, and help us help our community. Help us help our world. Help us help young people who need to know Jesus in a very real and desperate way. So let me pray. And then actually, actually why don't our buskers come back up here? By the way, this is Cam and Evan. They are incredible, aren't they? Yeah. I'm going to pray and then just let them uh, play for a little bit, fill out your car, you can go throw it in there, and then... Uh, in about four minutes, 
I will tell you who the, the auction winners were and where you need to go. Any donations you want to make tonight, slide it in the envelope with your card and then drop it on the tray between the doors. You can do that on the way out tonight. But let me pray. And then, uh, well, Evan looks like you're going to play a solo now. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much again for tonight. Thank you for just this incredible opportunity uh, and the people in this room. And I just pray, Jesus, that you would refresh them. That you would pour your love into their lives in such a way that when they walk out of here tonight, it will overflow into every other person that they meet. Thank you, Father God, for the work that you've been doing. Uh, it is incredible. Uh, thank you so much. I want to be praising the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll give you, like I said, a couple of minutes to fill out those cards. And Evan's going to play for you. Because Cam vanished. Uh, and then we'll tell you who won what in the auction. I gotta even get those, that's why I can't tell you now. <laughs>